Uh, welcome to the stage, Jeffrey Decina. The fossil fuel industry likes to remind us that we are living on government handouts. Never mind the fact that they are too, yeah. but soon enough we won't be. The question is, are we prepared to stand on our own? But first off, those of you in renewables, well done. We've doubled our capacity of renewables in just a decade, and we see massive cost reductions in solar and wind, and we've created a jobs boom unparalleled in other industries. But challenges lie ahead. Wind's PTC is headed out. Solar's ITC will be gone in a few years, at least fading out. And the EPA yeah. is set to save oil and gas <laughs> billions. <laughs> so in this adverse climate, future seems uncertain. Where can we look? We've often looked to Europe, where many of these technologies come from. Germany, Sweden, and the UK are going through many of their own changes. Germany's ambitious energy vendor policy aims to re increase renewables, decrease CO2 emissions, and at the same time, eliminate their entire nuclear fleet. Sweden has been a leader in wind energy for decades. They hit their EU 2020 goals seven years early, and they were on track to be fossil fuel free by 2040. In the UK, renewables are on the rise. In the second quarter of this year, almost a third of their electricity came from renewables. In Scotland's wind power alone produced over six and a half terawatt hours of electricity just in the first half of this year. But not all is good news. Germany is not on track to hit their targets. And the end of their feed-in tariff system means a transition to auctions that are pricing out smaller developers and creating devastating competition. In Sweden, wind development has hit a wall. The green certificate program that was designed to help this industry has crashed, leaving developers like Nordisk Windkraft in a holding pattern, just waiting for prices to recover. And in the UK, the onset of Brexit is leaving investors wary. And what money is still coming from the government in contracts is leaving offshore wind projects so cheap that many fear these projects won't be realized. So has Europe had its heyday? Is this the new normal of renewable energy in Europe? Or is it just growing pains of an industry learning to stand on its own? I would argue that this is only the beginning. Europe will hit its sustainable energy goals, but they need a new model. They need a new way to develop energy, something more American. Yeah! Europe's time has passed. It is our turn to lead. Europe is now looking to us in this very difficult time of transition on how we are going to realize this clean energy revolution. 112 companies have committed to 100% sustainable energy between 2020 and 2050, and they're putting the money where their mouth is. Companies like Salesforce, Starbucks, Google, Amazon, Apple, they've dumped billions of dollars into this industry, and not just because they want to save the planet. As Google's Joe Kava said, we are technology agnostic, but we are not price agnostic. As we heard, renewables are becoming the economic choice. And they're exporting this across the pond. All over Europe, corporate PPAs are becoming the way that people do business, that renewables are getting funded. And if you look at the trends, the US is leading on this. In 2015, a fifth of contracts for renewable development came from corporate PPAs. Europe has not signed as many, but they're booming now. Our peak was in 2015. They are just hitting it now. They are following in our footsteps. This revolution will continue with or without the government, no matter who's in the White House, no matter who controls Congress. We will make this happen. But it won't be easy. Just because the PTC and the ICC are ending, doesn't mean fossil fuel subsidies are ending. But we won't be alone. We've got friends across the pond, we've got friends in business, and we've got friends across the country. 
So my message is simple. <laughs> Stay the course. Yay!